Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna show you inside of DaVinci Resolve how to achieve the clean color grading, why it is useful, for what kind of projects is it is useful, and I'm gonna show you that it's simple and easy to do it in just a few steps. Coming up. Hi guys, my name is Paul, I'm a German filmmaker and this channel is all about filmmaking, gear reviews, but also DaVinci Resolve tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribe, I would really appreciate that, that helps the channel grow. So in this video I have prepared um, two clips from um, the project with Hans Zimmer that I've shot and the client asked me to do a clean color grading and that is basically very often requested from most uh, corporates because it's it's just a clean or a neutral representation of what the image should look like so it's nothing too fancy in terms of orange teal or something like that so if you want to learn more about that filmic or that more creative look then check out my last video where I talked about that here it's just about bringing the contrast to the point where it should sit the saturation and overall how the image looks neutral so here I have two clips in inside of DaVinci Resolve both were shot on red but um, the workflow that I'm showing you is that you just simply can do with any other camera because last time I used the Canon camera so um, that doesn't really matter. So now I have my note tree ready. What I'm gonna do now is I make a color space transform on my third note. I'm gonna explain in a bit why on a third. Then I'm gonna uh, put my input color space because this was shot on red. So red, white, gamut, RGB. And if you're shooting on a different camera, then you should set your um, yeah, gamma accordingly. So Canon or Sony or whatever. And the output color space is Rec 709. And since my timeline is already set to Rec 709, it already shows me that, but I just gonna make sure that I had have nothing wrong here. So this is my color space transform. Why am I gonna do that in the third note? So the first two notes that I have previous to that note are still in the red white gamut. So they are in a broader, bigger color space in a lock color space where I have a lot more control about exposure contrast and everything like that. And the last three notes are in the Rec 709 color space. That is helpful because much or many tools here inside of DaVinci Resolve only work in that uh, Rec 709 color space, for example, the color picker and something like that. But first of all, we're gonna make sure that our exposure is correct. So, and if I look at the image and also here on my scopes, it looks pretty much all right. I mean, the brightest spot here is the light, which is totally fine, but my midtones aren't really there where they should be. So I go into my HDR wheels and then here under these three dots, I also set my proper gamut. That also, so that DaVinci Resolve knows, okay, um, this is the lock that it was shot in and it, it, it adjusts all the um, things that I'm adjusting right now accordingly to that gamut, which is what we want, so that it's a clean or a correct representation. So in my global settings, I go down above about one stop, something like that. No, even one and a half stops looks pretty good to me. I also adjust my contrast now because that is also what I want to do. So I go into my dark, this is really the darkest point of the image. And here I also go around, yeah, almost like two stops. And now in the shadows, we have a little bit more room here also bring them down about one and a half stops and now my light i bring up about yeah pretty much a half stop something like that looks fine to me um Maybe bring my overexposure a little bit more down. So that is, um, yeah, what is really powerful about this HDR width because it's only adjusting the brightness levels, not the the saturation. Because if you do the same thing in the primary wheels, um, it also the the saturation is going to be adjusted. So that's the powerful tool. And here in the HDR wheels, and I've set it to the specific gamut, it's now a correct representation. 
And in my second note, I want to adjust my white balance because if I look now, the image looks still too warm for me. And basically for the clean look, um, clean always means a little bit cooler. And that's why cooler tones make, make more sense. So I go again into the HDR weirds, go into the red white gamut. And in my gamma, it is red lock 3G10. I can also go now in temperature and tint, but um, here I have to pull it way too much back down. It takes a lot of time, so I just go into the global and adjust it here. And I make it certainly more blue and go even a little bit up into the magenta because I also feel there's a little bit of green in this image. So, but look at this. I mean, this already helps us tremendously for the clean look. So now I'm gonna qualify her skin. Again, why I'm gonna do it now? Because these nodes right here are in the Rec. 709 color space. And for the color picker, especially when you wanna um, qualify colors in um, the log, there's still two, two less contrast and saturation that um, Resolve can properly um, recognize what you wanna, um, yeah, what you wanna qualify. So that were that, therefore, this makes sense here. So, okay, now I'm gonna check what he has qualified. He's already done a pretty good job. Um, I also wanna do the highlights here. And basically, I'm not too mad about if the other things are also qualified here because they are also in the same color range. So, okay, and now I'm gonna go into the primaries and I bring in the midtones a little bit more orange, something like that. The lift I'm gonna make slightly more reddish tones and the gain I make a little bit more blue, just a tiny bit because also the ambient light here looks cooler. So that makes sense in this case. And now what I wanna do because before and after it's subtle but um, it looks it, it makes her pop a little bit more and I'm gonna go into the midtone detail and bring it down to about minus 30 um, it helps to clean out um, the skin a bit so that not everything is directly visible which <laughs> which is quite good now I have two more notes over and what I'm gonna do in this note is I might just minor adjustments to it. Basically, it looks perfect right now, but I can even go a step further. And what I personally don't like is this green thing right here from this wagon or something, what it was. I don't know the English term, to be honest, um, but I'm gonna want to desaturate it a bit so that it doesn't pop that much. So, and since it's green, I go here into the green channel and I desaturate it quite a bit. Something like that. Also the blue tones from this rope white there. Yeah, that looks about right. And now in the last note, I'm gonna go into luminance versus saturation. And I'm gonna pull the blacks down and the highlights. This ensures that um, True black is black and doesn't have any other color shifts such as red or blue and the true white is white so that way it looks clean. So now we're gonna look what we've achieved so far. So let's go, let's deactivate all these nodes right here real quick. So we started in log and when we made it to Rec 709 it looks a little bit uh, overexposed. A um, little, little bit too bright, so I went down to in the first note and adjusted my exposure and also my contrast. And also already that makes the image so much better. So, and then um, I adjusted my white balance to, yeah, and these notes right here are just balancing the image. That's not color grading, that's more like color correction. And then I just make minor adjustments to her skin, uh, bring a little bit more life in there. And now, here I've adjusted um, the color of the green and the blue right here. And the last note is like luminance versus saturation. And this is the clean look. So this looks re really neutral and just has basically done not a lot, but it just made 
contrast and also a little bit saturation to the things that we want to enhance and that is her. I have also a second clip right here. Same thing here, color space transform and boom, it's done. So now, first note, I'm gonna adjust my um, exposure and also my contrast. I also go into the HDR wheels and I also set it here under this, these three dots to the correct gamma and color space. So that's done right here. First, I'm gonna bring my exposure down because a little bit, it's a little bit too bright for me personally. So I bring it down about one stop, something like that. Then I go to my deepest darks and look at the outside here, how it's getting darker right here. So um, pretty much increasing the contrast that way. Yeah, about one and a half stops. Now I go into the shadows and bring them also a little bit more down. Yeah, something like that looks all right to me. And I go into my light so and I bring them up quite a bit. So maybe half a stop, something like that. And guys, look at it. Just minor things make a huge difference. Next note is going to be my white balance again. And as I explained before, um, cooler tones will help you to uh, achieve the clean look. And also this one looks a little bit too um, warm to me. But here, if I'm gonna go into magenta, there is already a little magenta tint in the image and my skin tones doesn't seem right. So I go into the blue and push it more towards teal. So a little bit more towards green. And now the image looks about right to me something like that yeah and i mean look at it it makes a huge difference and also the skin tones look right now and that's really important also so and here again i'm gonna qualify my skin tones will help them to bring these guys alive here so it's just a minor thing but also here i'm gonna bring the mid-tone detail little bit down we can see it here what it does to his skin now I have increased it but since I want to make his skin a little bit more smoother I go something like that so what I personally don't like now is that I have a lot of teal tones right here which aren't distracting for me a little bit so I'm gonna pull them down so I'm gonna go again, hue versus saturation, go into the blue tones, into the teal, and I see that already now the bottle here and the monitor are getting cleaner, which is what I want. So that looks about right to me. And again, I go into last to luminance versus saturation. That way I ensure that true white is white and true black is black. And that guys is how you're gonna achieve the clean look it is pretty easy if you have any further questions you know how that game works just drop them in the comments below you can also ask me on instagram you also find me there and as i've said if you like this video please hit that like and subscribe button that really helps to grow this channel and i'm gonna see you in my next video cheers